So we're going to continue our look at Rory Gallagher. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the track Bad Penny. <laughs> It's Jeff Sinker from Scat Guitar Lessons Online, teaching you songs and musical ideas in a style that's easy to follow and understand. Bad Penny is a track from Rory's eighth studio album entitled Top Priority, and it was released back in 1979. Now, as well as looking at the song, I'll also be running through the settings I'm using to create the sound using the VST plugin Amplitude 5. Well, Without any further ado, let's get into it. Right, that opening section, he does this different, depending really what mood he's in. But on the studio version, it starts off with us just muting the strings and just playing a couple of chugs over the top of it. What he's doing is one and a two and a three and a four and one and a two and a three and a four and then we're into the chords, which starts off with a D5 chord, and he's hammering on as he's playing it. We're getting this. So I'm just holding down D5 so I don't have my finger on the open E string. I'm just fretting the G2 and the B3, and I'm just going to hammer. I'm going to hit the strings so it's an open string, and just hammer down with my first finger onto that second fret. So we get this. Next, he's going across to an F chord, but he's doing the uh, the low part of the F chord with his thumb. Now, I've got to be honest with you, I do struggle with this. I've got something not right in the shape of my thumb. So I do struggle getting my finger over the top. But, for the sake of this video, I'm trying to get as accurate as possible to the way it was played by Rory. I'm going to struggle, but he's going to hit that. You know, separation. I always get that. So he's going to hit that. Then he's going to be playing the F chord, which is just D3, G2 and B1. Now, if you're having a problem playing that, like I said, with that finger, you can just play it like that. So you get this. Can do that. But Rory does it with the thumb. Then you're going to be lifting off the fingers and playing that. So you get this. Just taking that G. And then across to a C chord. And you're going to go. So. You can hit that kind of hard if you want. But it's a C chord. And I'm just lifting up that second finger. Back to the D5 chord. Then we've got this little line here. I'm going to be playing an open string on the A, hammering down onto the third fret. Then, because he's still leaving his third finger on the third fret on the B string, he's going to play. So he plays the B string to the open G string. So. round and round and round and round so that is the main riff that Rory was playing so he does slight variations to it but that is what you can hear in full on the studio album for the first two repeats of that now after that he goes into the first of the kind of lead one well, kind of solos that he's playing through there like this <laughs> 
Okay, what I'm doing there on the G string, and I'm going to do a 757. I, I know you can do this as a pull as well because I've heard him do that. So you just pick that, pull off to the five, and hammer back on. But again, I've heard him pick it as well. Then we go across to the B string and we're going to do a six to an eight. Then we've got, if you was counting it as that. Picking it, that's how it would go. But he doesn't pick it. So you're going to do a 6H, you're going to hold, and then you do this kind of slow, lazy bend. Full tongue bend. And then he picks that, and then comes down to the 6, so he's got a... At the top of the bend, picks it at the top, pulls down, and then flicks off to the sixth fret. Then we've got a five six, and then we do a five six five down to the seven on the G. So And then it's back to your usual uh, riff, the D chord, F, back to the C, round and round and round. And of course, that is into the verses where Rory is singing. Goes through one verse, and then he goes back to the same lick, but he plays it an octave higher. So let me show you how he's doing that. And what I've done with this one before I play it through, uh, I have added a octave pedal to it uh, something that Rory did on this track now I've only used it on the first octave beneath because what you're hearing on the album track is that riff that you played at the beginning but you're also hearing him play an octave higher so when he's playing live he definitely has the octave either pedal on it in fact, I am led to believe from studying that he also does the second octave behind it. But for this, I've just got the first octave uh, switched on. So you're hearing this and also hearing that low one at the same time. He also introduces it slightly different as well. So it goes like this. <laughs> So the difference there, instead of him doing, because you'll be playing 15, 13, 15, he's doing a 13, a 13 full tone bend back to the 13th. So we get this um, like that. So you're, you're bending straight up, out of it, and then back up. Cross into 13, 15 on the high E string. There's that full tone bend, back out from the 15, back to the 13, and then I'm doing 12, 13, 12, 13 pull up, down to the 15 on the B. So. One little bit I just wanted to show you, which is this kind of break that he does. It's a couple of times you hear it, you also hear it in one of the guitar solos as well. It goes like this.
So all I'm doing now, I'm just playing a C5 chord. I'm doing this. So it's down and then down to a G5. Back to a C chord. Then you hold up for the bar. Then you move down to a B flat and you're going to play a bar and a half of that and you're just playing them as eights. And then on the three and the four count of that bar, you play C5. And then we're back to the normal run. So. Well, I thought I would do that because I know someone's going to turn around and go, Oi! You ain't done that break, as they like to do. Well, I thought uh, at this point I'd go through the settings that I've used to create uh, this guitar tone, which I think it's kind of close. You know, it'd be hard to say. You know, I'm hearing it in my perspective, listening to the tracks. Uh, but what I'd done, I did some research on what gear that Rory was using predominantly uh, during this period of time. Uh, and of course, in that days, he didn't have a lot of choice on amplification. But I, I know one of his favourite amplifiers was an AC30. And uh, this love of this amplifier, of course, was then passed on to Brian May from Queen and a number of other great guitarists as well. But that helped me when I was setting this up. Now, I use, um, when I'm doing a lot of teaching, when I'm doing these recordings, I always use Amplitude, and I've got uh, Amplitude 5, and I've also got the Tonex, uh, which is the new system, which has profiles of numerous amplifiers, and they've got profiles of AC30s. So what I did, I kind of based it on what had been used on some of the Brian May presets and you'll notice on this effects chain that I've got down here that I really borrowed quite a few of them. But what I've got here is one of the profiles from Tonex, which is the A Crunch because I did want it to drive a little bit and you can see the settings there. Uh, push the volume up a bit. I've got backed up on the bass and I push the mids and the trebles out there because I'm already getting a little bit of a twangy sound when I'm playing that. Uh, if I put the bass up too much, it kind of muffles it. Just doesn't really well go where I want it to do. You know, back away from the treble and then just leave the bass up. I kind of don't. It doesn't have that same bite that you normally hear when uh, you know, Richie was playing. So, put the mids up and got the treble up there. Again, you could play around with that if you're using Amplitube or if you're trying to copy this for any settings you might have on any kind of uh, VST plugin. The gain really is depending on your pickups, what you've got on your guitar, you know, how that's going to be driven. I have got coils and I've got. Uh, hot rails on these i have got the dave murray hot rails up front and back so that's going to be really making a little bit hotter on the amplifier so play with the game just to kind of you don't want it too much because uh, you know it just wasn't driving the same in them days but that's what i've got of the amplifier and uh, Tonex, when you take one of their profiles you don't get to play with the speakers because they've already done it uh, just so you can see it, uh, I've got all these various AC30 kind of profiles they've got there. Uh, but the one that I liked with the AC Crunch, they had some other ones that uh, I could play with. Uh, that had to be a driven one. But I kind of really like this one. This just had the right bite. So that is the amplifier now let's have a look at the chain uh we're working from uh, what we've got here you will see i have really taken a lot of the brown may stuff there uh i'm going to talk about this one uh, afterwards but of course 
the main thing that we're looking at is the treble booster, which, uh, according to Brian May, it was Rory Gallagher that really kind of turned him on to the use of the treble booster. So what I've done in classic style here, I've turned it full on. So I have. Does make it noisy, hence I've got this thing. And as you can see, it's active at the moment with that red light on. So I'm going into the treble booster. Now, I've got this here, this Brian May thing. I've played with it a few times. And what I've found, that it makes the system less noisy. Now, I'm going to kick this noise gate off. And you can probably hear that. There's a little faint higher hus in the hus, a little humming in the back. Now, if I switch this off, gets a lot louder. So I've been using this red box special as a, it just mutes, it doesn't kind of. It just cleans it up a little bit. Oh, so, you know, well done, Brian May. <laughs> You've got our well, amplitude. Um, it just works as a great little pedal in the front there to help the noise gate. So noise get there, you can hear it does go some very, very quiet. But that's what I have got in the front of the amplifier. Now, for my solo, I do know, according to the information, he did use a tube screamer. And this is the amplitude tube screamer. What I've done with this one, I haven't driven it too hard on the overdrive, but I have used it as a booster again to push the amplifier by kicking the level up. Uh, the tone I've backed it up a little bit because once I put that in there was a little bit of drive, it got a little bit too fuzzy. So I've kind of backed away and put it a bit more of a bass, but I get that. It just acts a little bit. Just gives it a little bit more sustain. So it does. Yeah, I also know Rory used to use his volume control a lot. So uh, when I was doing the song, what I did for the rhythm guitar, I backed off on the volume. So that was turned down a little bit. I know that Rory had done some configuration with these dials here. Uh, and again, that information was on that uh, website that I've got the link for you down below. I haven't done that. So I haven't. But one of the things I did do, because I've got these very hot rails, I kind of diluted a bit by adding the middle pickup to the back pickup. If I was on the back pickup, it just really kind of was a little bit too... But coming on to this pickup here, I kind of... To me, it just cleaned it up a little bit for me. I didn't want it too fuzzy. Uh, so that's what I was using for my uh, lead line. So I've just put that tube screamer on. Give it that nice little bit of sustain. Now, I did mention in the lesson the Octavider. And this is a, this one that it is based on here is that pedal, which was a Boss pedal, I believe. I'm sure it was. Uh, looks about as battered as some of the Boss pedals I still have. But I used it. I didn't kind of turn it flat out on this thing. Here. I it just seemed to be everybody in the 70s, when they had something, they just turned it right up. So I thought, yeah, I'll do the same thing. So I've turned that up. Uh, but I've kind of not taken the mix too much on the octave. So when you was hearing that... I, I was getting that lower octave there. I know you can take it down even more. I can take the second octave here. Can't really hit too much there. Let's just bring that up. Like, let's, let's do like this. Now this going really, I should, well, it should be, but... Uh, see, it's too much when you put that on. So it's just a fine line in that balance. Actually, don't say too bad. So, anyway, I thought you might be interested in all the, the sound I've got there. So, uh, usual thing though is this here. 
is to have that uh, treble booster right at the front and let's say I've just turned it full on so I have Tube Screamer which is what Rory was supposed to have used uh, which is for just giving that thickness you know if you haven't got that in your effects chain then you ain't gonna get it I, I got it in, a, in here in Amplitude 5 but I say it's just acting as a second noise gate because it does get noisy when I put everything on there Oh, and uh, Tonex. Uh, I haven't really done anything on the Tonex as far as videos, but uh, it feels great. I, I just love these profiles that have gone on there. I should do some more videos on that, but uh, I I love the fact of just getting this really good live sound, um, kind of a real sound from an AC30. Uh, I found before the amplitude, the standard ones they had before, just weren't, just didn't have that bite. Uh, but uh, now they've got the profile with Tonex, um, yeah. So if, you, if you've not tried it before, uh, I believe there's an SE version. Uh, you should try and check it out. Anyway, that is what I have been using for my effects chain and my amplifier for this and the Moon Child lesson.